World War One aircraft and vehicles would certainly be an interesting addition to War Thunder, don't you think? Well, probably. But also yes and no, there's benefits and there is certainly a lot of cons. Obviously, the significant historical importance of such World War I aircraft, and obviously tanks and vessels, we already have some in War Thunder. The closest thing that comes to an aircraft, however, is the Poe II. In terms of a tank, I believe it's the Independent, and there are actually a few Dreadnoughts, and obviously we've got some of those ship things. But suffice to say that I'm not really quite satisfied. Yesterday, one of my viewers commented on the fact that there was a lack of World War I vehicles in the game in its entirety. I don't think that is necessarily a bad thing to ask for. However, it's not really in the best interest of War Thunder to even consider doing that in the first place. A, the marketplace value is really high tier vehicles. And two, you're playing a PO2. And this is essentially the World War I experience right here. Obviously, we already have reserve vehicles in game, but a below reserve tier for World War One aircraft that can't go up or even, you know, face reserve aircraft in normal matchmaking could be interesting if you were really to work the mechanics backwards a little bit. Obviously, these are important machines to history. Fokker triplane, the uh, Sop with Camel, and there's so many other seaplanes and naval uh, bombing aircraft, so on and so forth. Obviously, the Mark Fives and, and, and the female and male versions of the FT-17s and, you know, just a whole host of just different things. And going back over YouTube's history, at least over a, a time period of the last five years, the discussion of World War One vehicles comes up very rarely, and I have a feeling I know why. It's because the game has already developed past that point in time. The interests are not necessarily there. While it would be fantastic to fly these and, and drive these vehicles, there really only has been one user mission to date that has, well, this, the Fokker Eindecker. And it was covered by Baron von Games uh, in a, for, as a user mission uh, back in 2017. Since then, the discussion on whether World War I aircraft or even vehicles would be necessary has really stopped uh, in its entirety. Why is that? Is it because that they've already given you reserve, um, you know, interwar aircraft that nobody really goes back to play anymore? Or is it because the gameplay would be so mundane, slow and time consuming that it wouldn't really be worth, you know, going backwards rather than just instead focusing on going forward? Well, it's quite simple. Aircraft are like that are slow. That's their charm. They've got nothing going from them other than machine guns and small bombs. But it would have been epic to have in game. Now, I'm not opposed to the idea of having World War One era types in the game. For planes, I should probably be a separate from the main line to avoid having to, you know, change the high, whole entire system that we have currently, that is the ranks of 1 to 7. But it's not a bad idea, and, well, proper naval combat with those kind of ships already exist. Some of them are rank 5. How do you integrate these World War One aircraft and tanks and, and so on and so forth into you know, regular game. It's just improbable to really balance it. Sure, they could be added, but at what cost, really? And the addition of World War One would pretty much require entirely new tech trees for nations that don't completely line up with the ones that we have right now. And it would require the addition of new nations or subtraction of a few, and it would be a massive amount of rework. Sure, they could just change the flag and give it to those historical nations, but in hindsight, it's a lot more work than it's worth. And Gaussian has stated in the past, at least from a post in 2014, that, you know, Gaussian chose the timeframes for the aircraft and the tanks was purely for player enjoyability. The First World War fighters were far more underpowered, resultingly slow, more fragile and more unreliable than the reserve planes that many people dislike. And I guess there is an issue here. Most of the War Thunder's player base wouldn't enjoy flying these things. Maybe as a separate sort of more limited game, maybe even a April Fool's event, or maybe you could even go as far as to have like a limited once-off event in, in commemoration of something, you know, spectacular on a certain type of date. But there are the World War One titles out there that do this a lot better. For example, Rise of Flight. War Thunder is not really a World War One game, even though it has World War One dreadnoughts and so on and so forth. I can see the argument for it. It wouldn't necessarily make sense considering the current focus on progression is to get you up to higher tiers and for you to unlock and buy premiums, right? If they were going to go backwards, it'd just subtract from the game in its entirety at its current playable state. And there is another reason for materialism, essentially, basically because the game systems were set up to model more modern aircraft, mostly made of metal with substantial amount of engine power. 
you know, old canvas and wood biplanes with maybe 100 horsepower, if you're lucky, are harder to represent in a game like this. So if you want your historical authenticity, then, you know, you might be sacrificing quality or expending a mass amount of effort just for a small part in early uh, War Thunder. What I would like to see is more interwar vehicles. However, who is really going to go back in time to research a vehicle that you might only use once or twice? That's the other thing. Most people are playing at top tier, rank five and six. So, you know, it doesn't really add up. We play to get better vehicles. That is the progression. So either War Thunder's progression system has to change or maybe the whole entire game has to be reformatted, in which case it'd be too costly, too time uh, wasting, and well, what's the last eight years been? But I really want to fly uh, a Red Baron Fokker DR1. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Cheerio.